What's up, Real Florida Fishing Channel? Today we're here with Mike V from MB3 Jigs. <laughs> A little blooper there. Today we're going to be going over all of the jigs. He makes hog balls, he's got uh, soft plastics. <laughs> Alright, should we start this over? No! <laughs> this is good, this is good. Oh, yeah. That's quality. So, as you can tell, this is our first time doing something like this. But today we're going to do a beer review as well as a lure review. We're going to try to release these videos uh, once a week. We're going to review a different lure and a different beer. So, what as I said, we, uh... today we have Cigar City Brewing. It's the Invasion Tropical Pale Ale. Let me bring this up for you. It's a very, very tasty beer. Uh, I can't you... wait to put a Bud Light in here, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's very good. It, it hits you a little bit more than a Bud Light. So, you know, Jordan might be a lightweight over here, you know, might need to switch over to Bud Light a little quicker yeah, than some of us, but he's also been drinking all day playing golf, so. You thought fishing was the only thing we did. I also yeah. golf when it's blowing 30 miles per hour. <laughs> the wind is terrible and you can't really fish. Excuse, I know, but yeah. it's all right. That's the reason why Ryan beat me in the last tournament, because I make excuses. <laughs> <laughs> I go golfing when he goes fishing. Anyways, back to you, Ryan. So, uh, we're going to let Mike get right into it. So, Mike, first of all, what got you started into making jigs? Uh, man, so probably about five, six years ago, I used to take trips uh, up north in Maryland, Delaware, and just chase the stripers through the inlets, through the beaches and the surfs, and uh, each trip I took, I could never find that, that one jig, that perfect jig I, I really wanted to target those fish with, depending on what the current was, the water temperature, the water clarity was. Uh, so that's really where it all started was, you know, uh, I couldn't find what I needed out in the shop, so I decided to start making my own and, you know, began chasing the stripers, blues up north, flounder up north with them. And from there, you know, we've grown from a, a tiny little garage, um, actually a basement shop, uh, up in Pennsylvania to here, you know, I've got a full garage shop down here in, in Clearwater, Florida. What's it What's it like to catch a fish on a jig that you made, or a lure, or whatever the case may be? Man, there's there's no cooler feeling than taking some time, putting the effort into creating something that in your mind you feel like it's going to work, you know it's going to work, getting out there and you can get getting that first thump and you know, being able to catch the targeted species with something that you created that you know it was inspiring you to get out there and go fishing. So. I'd say, honestly, there's, there's no cooler feeling than that, you know, putting that time and effort into it and you know, getting awesome. that reward. That's awesome. I can only imagine. So one of the, I used to tie flies, and one of the things that stands out to me, the, just looking at these jigs and these lures, first of all, this one, there's nothing worse than running across a school of mahi and not getting them to eat. And anybody who watches this channel, um, who fishes offshore, can probably relate, you probably skipped some squid, you've probably skipped some, anything across the bait trying to get these these mahi to eat. Honestly, if I were to open up a, a box of jigs, it's the first thing I'd throw. Like, that's that's insane. So this one stands out to me immediately because this is what I throw. I like to throw pompano jigs and things like that when I see mahi because just the influence. Another thing that I notice is this pink, this pink and white. This is uh, my favorite right there. How heavy is this? So right there what you got is a two ounce bucktail, ultra minnow. Okay. How uh, big is this hook? That's a big hook. So you're looking at an 80 Mustad ultra point hook there. Um, I think I've never been. Yeah, basically the, um, with all the jigs, we've done a ton of research, a ton of hook research. I can't tell you how many hundreds of different hooks I've gone through to find that right hook for each jig uh, to give you that longevity, give you that sharpness. Uh, and overall, just give you that performance. And you know, Mustad has, has come through time and time again with the premier hook uh, for these bucktails and these jigs. No, I mean, I definitely can agree. Mustad makes a very good hook. Um, so let's see. Tell us about these hog balls a little bit. So, before we get into the hog balls, you want to skip so hog balls we're. Right now? No, no, we're. <laughs> so, we're going offshore Monday. Uh, this oh, one, yes. Uh, we're going out with a guy named Pablo. 
who, uh, real Coquina, 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 Coquina Charters, Coquina Charters on Monday. <laughs> and the weather's not looking great. The idea of this charter was to go out for um, blackfin tuna, big amberjack, and a uh, possible African pompano. But realistically, with the weather looking as it is, we understand that we might not be able to get out that far. And he said as a backup plan, we'll go for snapper and hogs. So that's where these hog balls come in. That's where these come in. What, right what separates your hog ball from all the other, hog balls are huge right now. Everybody's talking about hog balls. Yep. Right? So one thing I've known from using your jigs now for the last year or so is they last forever. That's one of the prime things. But what do you do differently in your hog balls? So there's a couple of different things. Like I said, I already talked about the, the hook reviews. I can't tell you how many hundreds of different styles of hooks I've gone through to find that perfect hook. And then from there, each of the three colors you're seeing right now that Ryan's showing, uh, the candy green, candy pink, and the ultra glow. Hello. Those are all three custom made colors. So a lot of guys out in the shops would be kind of tied to buying whatever's hanging off those hooks in the shops. These colors were designed and made based on angler experience, angler input, uh, previous clients who have wanted to design very specific colors and these three right here uh, you know, really stand out and then finally the, the final touch is that you know a lot of the jigs on the market right now are painted and finished um, my jigs come custom colored custom painted and then they're also finished off with an epoxy clear coat so that longevity is exponentially longer than what you're gonna get from a lot of those jigs and those bucktails off uh, of, you know out of the typical tackle shop yeah when I see these, pink would be my first choice. I love pink. Yeah, I love pink, pink inshore. They work great. If you watch the videos, I'm always about red and pink uh, chick heads. This one stands out. This is the one I'm going to use on Monday to do some hog fishing. Absolutely. So how big is this one? So right there, what you got is an ounce and a quarter. Uh, hog ball tied up to a four ounce or four oh uh, Mustad octopus hook. And from just doing some different experiments with the, the hog balls uh, between circle hooks, straight J hooks and octopus hooks, the hookup ratios were astronomically more consistent with the offset uh, octopus hooks than anything else that was out there. And that goes for hogs, grouper, snapper, grunts, uh, straight across the board. Don't mind my son in the background. I'm on father duty tonight. The girls are having a girls night out. So we took advantage of this opportunity. And I keep hitting this dang thing with my elbow. But um, that's the first thing I saw that was the offset hook. I really, I really like that. The offset hook, I did that. It gives a great, great bait presentation, and it also gives you that opportunity when they sit in the bottom and they look really prime. You've got the bait up in the current, so it's got a little bit of that natural movement. And then, you know, especially for the hogs, you know, where there's a top down attack, that, that bait sitting up already, the offset hook has already put you in that prime spot to set that hook on the hog. And he just said something really important the top down attack approach with, with hogs. It, they feed down. They're all crustaceans, crabs, shrimp. So they are pointed down. The thing about hogs and the thing about, if you find grunts, you find hogs, right? So if you, grunts are much more aggressive than hogs. Hunt, hogs are docile. You can shoot a hog with the spear gun and another hog's gonna come up and say, hey, what are you doing? And you shoot that one too, right? So with the grunts, or with the hogs, with that top-down approach, you want this hog ball sitting right on the bottom, just like that, with your shrimp floating, and finding that hook is a very subtle, uh, subtle bite. If you notice our last hog video, you'll notice, if you're watching our rod tip, there's no movement. That's just feeling the vibrational line. You know when a hog hits, it's a hog. Um, where I'm getting with that is, this is vital because of how it sits in the sand or the coral, wherever the case may be. Why do you choose J hooks as opposed to circle hooks? So very specifically with these hooks and these, the offset octopus hooks, um, what's really nice about them is that a lot of the hog balls that are out there right now have an additional terminal tackle to them, um, swivels, some chains, things like that. This right here, like you are attached to the jig to the line, like there's no there's no middleman. So when you're getting those subtle bites from those hogs, you feel every last bit of it. And those offset hooks, the way you've got the shrimp on there, the way you've got maybe a barnacle, a piece of crab, whatever kind of crustacean you might be using, like you're already in the strike zone. Yeah. As opposed to some of those J hooks and some of those circle hooks where you know there's a little bit of extra effort, a little bit of extra work that needs to be involved. But with those offset hooks, like you're right there and it's it's already set. <laughs> 
next question. We've noticed, and actually I've taken Mike out on a hog trip before, and I bought um, a five pound bag of frozen shrimp and he thought I was crazy. He, he said, um, I don't know why you choose frozen shrimp over live shrimp. And that's a good point, but he caught a ton of hogs with me. So I might have changed him into a believer. Now, one thing about these hooks is, it, to me, looking at them, it, I would prefer a live shrimp on this type of setup as opposed to a frozen shrimp, just because of the way you curl it in. Sure. Um, do you think that matters? So, honestly, you know, referencing back to that very specific trip where you bought the five pound bag of frozen shrimp, I went out, I got a bunch of live shrimp. Um, what you didn't mention is that I also brought a bag of 10 or a five pound bag of frozen Publix shrimp. Um, and you know, straight across the board, uh, you know, I'm a believer in the frozen shrimp hundred percent. And, you know, I think when it comes down to it, you know, that live shrimp, that little bit of extra life is, is obviously key, but when those hives are feeding, they're going to feed on anything that's down there. If it smells like a shrimp, looks like a shrimp, they're going to nail it. Absolutely. That's why I agree. That's why I, I prefer frozen shrimp because it's easier. You're going to lose live shrimp and every time it's like, oh, okay, there goes a, a quarter or 50 yep, cents or 75 cents. <laughs> yeah. Five ninety nine a dozen. There it goes. Yeah. But if I go red fishing in the flats and I have two dozen shrimp left over and I freeze them, mm -hmm. it, I'm going to have the same results regardless. My biggest hog is on frozen yeah, shrimp. I'll give it to you hundred percent that day. Um, you made me a believer. Like I was hundred percent on that live shrimp. I uh, bought the Publix ones kind of as a gimmick, uh, but when it came down to it, the live shrimp, the frozen shrimp that you bought, and the Publix shrimp, like they all performed yeah. as, as, as expected. Exactly, and the reason for that is because your grunts are much more aggressive than your hogs. Your hogs are very docile. Like I said, you could shoot a hog in the face and another hog will come over and be like, why'd you shoot my friend? And you shoot him too. Grunts are the opposite. They just attack, attack, attack. So you get on a school of grunts and there's some hogs underneath, you gotta filter through those hogs first, or those grunts first before you catch the hogs. And that's mm -hmm. one thing Ryan's really good at is he plucks a lot of hogs because he, he gets a subtle bite difference. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, Ryan is now the first best fisherman I know and he, he gets quite a few, so. Let's move on to some of the other jigs. So we talked about, how big was that one? These are the two ounce ultra minnows. We talked about the two ounce, yep. we've talked about the hog balls, and we've talked about what I call the mahi slayers. So these are what, half ounce? So what you got there is a poison tail bucktail. Eight, um, eighth ounce? So we go anywhere from eighth ounce up to three eighth ounce in those sizes. Uh, and they have a really unique hook shape. Again, a lot of hook review, a lot of hook, um, just testing at the end of the, end of the day. and. Again, must I came out on top. They offered this really awesome poison tail hook. Um, you know, kind of reminds me of a scorpion tail and it gives great action in the water. Great opportunity to set some really strong hook sets. And um, again, just absolutely laser sharp. You brought up a good point in testing. Where are these, where are these jigs been tested? So not only do I got a couple guys locally throughout who are, are more than happy to test these things, uh, inshore, offshore, on the flats, uh, deep wrecks, um, but you know, myself, I'll go out there and I'll make up a dozen different jigs, one of each of the different hooks, two of the different each of the hooks, and you know, I'll give them hell. I'll give them a run through structure. I'll give them a run through the pilings through bridges. Um, you know, basically go out there and try to break these hooks to find out what is gonna really give us the best results. Because uh, at the end of the day, honestly, MV3 Baits is all about you know, giving the, the common angler a custom bait, an opportunity for them to have input in, you know, creating the bucktail or the soft plastic or the jig that they want in the, the color they want and in the quality hook. So, you know, I'm more about getting those in, do these baits into people's these people's tackle boxes um, and making sure that they get out, make some memories, make some experiences, uh, and be able to turn back around six months later and use that same bucktail they bought uh, from day one because of the quality. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point because yeah. I've thrown something very similar to this. It didn't have the feather on it, right? So the same jig white jig. Uh, glow. This is a glow jig head. Uh, what is, what, how, what's the way that this So goes? what you have there is a 5 8 ounce uh, walleye jig bucktail uh, okay. with ultra glow. Uh, again, custom color uh, created within my shop. Um, and I promise that thing will light up nuclear in the dark. So the reason why I bring this up it is awesome. I fished a uh, kingfish tournament with Ryan actually, and I was throwing this in the entire time. Um, we got on a school of kings. We got we came across a wreck, right? And we were fishing this wreck, and there were probably 20 other boats out there fishing this wreck. 
We throw this, I threw this, caught a bonita. I threw this again, caught a small king. And then I, I was in charge of the boat, so I gave it to my brother. My brother flips it out and hooks it to a six foot spinner shark. This is just, just this jig. This single jig, it hit the, the, it hit the top of the water and a six foot spinner shark came out spinning it, spit the hook. I still have that jig. This was a year and a half ago and it still looks exactly like this. I would still throw the exact same jig today with the hook a year and a half ago. And if you know me, I don't take very good care of my stuff. Unfortunately, it's one of my downfalls of <laughs> focusing on same. family, whatever the case may be, it could be laziness, but it lasted. And it, it produced and it lasted. And that's really hard to find in jigs or in anything, really. Mm -hmm. I go buy anything else and it's usually a one and done. So what do you do that makes this last longer? Is this just trial and error and finding the right hooks and finding the right? Exactly. I can't overemphasize enough. Like the trial and error. So, you know, years and years and years in the making. When I first started, it was all about making white bucktails, one ounce, throwing them in the inlets, throwing them in the rocks, throwing them off the surf for, for stripers and blues up north in Maryland, Delaware, Jersey. Um, and then you know, a couple people came by, hey, what are you catching on? What do you, what are you use them? Can you make me some? And that's where it really started with, you know, there, there might be something here. And so honestly, the amount of hooks and rejects that I have in my shop from the last five, six years of testing alone mm -hmm. is mind blowing. Thousands mm -hmm. of hooks, easily thousands of hooks that are just sitting there that don't meet the quality, don't meet, you know, my expectations are standards. Like if I was a consumer, I want something that's going to last. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of the jigs that you find out there these days, or some of the bucktails you find out there these days, they look great. They look phenomenal. They're, they're digitally uh, printed or painted. Um, but the longevity is two, three casts, one toothy fish, they're done. Yeah. Um, so my goal is, you know, I don't need you to come back every other day to come get more jigs. I want you to go out there, use these jigs, catch fish, use them for months, use them for weeks, years, whatever it might be, and continue to just create memories on your own. Yeah. There's still, to this day, I have this in my, this exact same one without the feather in my box. And if I run across the school of Mahdi, which is rare, so last summer, I will immediately tie that on and I don't second guess one bit if that hook tip is, or that tip is going to break off, that barb is going to break off. Yeah. You've done a very good job with that, I will say that. I so. appreciate it. I mean, you know, especially with the 5 8 ounce bucktails, like that was probably one of the hardest hooks to find. Yeah. It was a hook to find that's going to work for your inshore fishing. So down here in Florida, you know, red, snook, trout, like what am I going to find that's going to fit for them? But in the same sense, that 5 8 ounce works beautifully offshore on the East Coast and we're catching 20 pound bonita, blackfin tuna, mahi, you know, we're getting this to kingfish. You know, I've got a couple guys down south that are just absolutely slaying kings and cobias with the 5 8 and a 3 8 ounce bucktail and the walleye version. That same hook, that 4 0 hook, is, is absolutely holding up. How do you recommend rigging these up? This is what I use. I mean, I like the big ones, don't get me wrong, but we're on the west coast and we're fishing, well, my boat at least, I, I'm not going much further than 120 feet because. It doesn't get safe at that point in time. So if I'm in 50 to 100 feet, I don't need a two ounce jig to work the water column. So I'm typically throwing this 5 eighths because I can, mm -hmm. I can cover a whole water column. I forgot where I was going with that. So this is a beer. So <laughs> what, um, here's a question for you. So what is your favorite knot to tie when you're using something like this, like the, the, the feather jigs? I mean, either of these, you're probably gonna tie the same yeah, so type, of, type of knot. Yeah, so awesome question. I think especially when I'm throwing the 5 8 ounce and the 2 ounce jigs, I'm targeting bigger fish. I'm in deeper water columns where you know, there's a lot more uncertainty where I can hook into a, several different varieties of larger fish. So 5 8 ounce, 2 ounce jigs, I am tried and true, probably really old school with it, but I'm going uni knot. A lot of guys go for jigs, bucktails with the, the, the loop knot. Um, you know, I've fished a lot of offshore tournaments in my kayak. The uni nut has not failed me. I've, I've pulled in some pretty serious fish with these jigs. And honestly, that there for me to change it probably is a superstition. Uh -huh. um, inshore though, when I'm looking at 3 8 ounce, quarter ounce, 1 8 ounce, it's always a, a loop nut. But anything bigger than that, when I'm using 5 8 ounce or the, um, the 2 ounce, I'm always tying a uni nut. And, and that's just obviously personal preference, but 
you know, I think when it comes down to the jigs, the knots themselves, fishing lures, 90% um, of, of what you're doing is probably the confidence in what you're doing. And that, that comes down to the knot and the jig, or the if, knot and the lure. If you're questioning his knots, we'll insert a clip of his latest sailfish video, which was unbelievable, landing that sailfish. <laughs> so, um, Ryan got one too, but we'll brag about Mike today. And I had a loop knot on my hook. Just, yeah. just so you know. <laughs> yes. I'm anti loop knot. I am loop knot everything. I will put a loop knot on. It's everything. not. It's you get I, the best action with a loop knot. I, I mean, that's just my personal preference. Live bait, uh, yeah. jigs, anything loop knot. I shouldn't say I'm anti loop knot. I'm anti trying anything new because I'm a loser. That's what I should say. Because... Jordan just needs me to show him how I tie my loop knot, yeah. and then he'll start. He'll, this, he'll start using my loop knot. I actually, <laughs> as much as I don't want to agree with that statement, I have to agree with that statement because his the action that he gets on his stuff and the freedom that his baits have, even when we're fishing my bait, is is way better than mine. So that's definitely something I need to learn. That's that's I mean that's a good point for you guys too. Is don't be afraid to try new things, but if it works for you, don't don't also don't be afraid to keep doing what works for you. I agree. I mean, offshore, a lot of times I have, I don't tie a loop knot to swivels and stuff like that. I have a knot. I don't even know what it's called, but I've been tying it since I was a kid and I don't want to change it because I'm scared that once I change it to some new knot I learned, uh, you know, on YouTube or something, I'm going to, you know, pull that knot on a grouper or something and then it's going to come up and the logic be all squiggly and I'm going to be like, oh, That's never happened to me. Wow. That never happens to me. <laughs> Because we probably don't change our knots. You don't change your yeah. knot. You got yeah. a knot that you like, you tie it, it doesn't fail. But the loop knot is better. The loop knot is better. I just like the loop knot for, I use it for live bait. Um, gives that live bait a little more a little more action. And I especially, I do a lot of jig fishing for, for snook, flare hawks and, and stuff. Grouper. And grouper. And grouper, yes. Grouper and, and short snook. grouper. Um, and I mean, right away, this, this jig right here, this is what jumped out to me. I'm, I'm gonna have to like steal this from from Mike <laughs> because I'm gonna be sending him pictures of some some big snook on this jig. That's gonna kill it. Yeah, I, I, re I really it like there. it. I mean, this <laughs> this this color combo is just it's it looks awesome. Cotton candy. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's what it is. Exactly. It's, it's, cotton, it's exactly a cotton candy inspiration yeah. right there. Well, it's I love cotton it. candy. I like guys. cotton candy until I go to the bathroom. The detail on this thing is just unreal. I mean, the, the, the speckle and the paint and everything. Is, is everyone's jig gonna be like this or did you just make these like this for today? So every jig that I do, guys, is hand-painted, hand-crafted. Uh, and one of the coolest parts is that every time I create an order, um, the angler who's buying that order has 100% say in you know, what they want. So if they want a certain color, a certain style, a certain dynamic to it, um, you know, that all comes from the angler. So you've got those custom uh, companies out there who do boat wraps or custom rods that help you build those things uh, to, to build your arsenal. Um, you know, I'm here to do that with your lures and your jigs as well. So, um, you know, a lot of these colors here are inspired from some previous orders, previous anglers, or things that have just really worked extremely well and have been super successful with, um, you, know, you know, personal experience. I'm telling them to add some more... Uh... What is that called again? Some flash, uh, some holographics. Uh, yeah, some oh, holographics. Wow. I'm all about the holographics, especially offshore. I want some holographics, but all right, let's move. Uh, so the reason why we're doing this video, like I said, is because we're going out Monday with Real Coquina and Pablo, and we're targeting AJ's. I probably, yeah, I probably did a terrible job. I'm sorry, I don't speak Spanish. Sorry, Pablo. Dos cervezas, por favor. That's the only thing. I've been to Spain, I've been to Portugal, and that's the only thing I know. But, um. So, uh, also, this I mean, video, we're doing a beer review. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is good. It's working just fine. Yeah, yeah. The invasion um, definitely has a crisp bite. First first draw okay. to it. Yeah, crisp, really very crisp. good. Speaking of Mike, I'm gonna need another one of these. No, oh, oh, yeah. Mike's got the cooler over there. We're gonna yeah, yeah, yeah. My, I just called my assistant here. It's real so quick. good, I went through it already. Yeah. It is really good. It's um I'm not I'm, Ryan is more of the craft beer guy. I'm typically a Bud Light guy. So Bud Light, if you like Oh look at that. In, wow. Invasion. Yeah. Before but like, I even knew, you invaded me with that beer. Did you see that? But like, if you like the sponsor of this video, I'll never drink it again. <laughs> mm. 
It is good. It's it's really good. And Cigar City is a local brewery in Tampa, and they're that's not, why we're uh, yeah. You know, uh, they're not sponsoring this video. We're not pushing this beer. We just wanted to try something different, which is a lot for me because I don't try anything different except the chicks. Jordan, how about you read the uh, oh the notes on the back there? The notes. Sing In us a song. Invasion, yeah. tropical pale ale with topical notes of mango and tangerine imparted from Simaco and Mazecops. <laughs> this crisp and seasonal pale ale is the perfect companion for long days of marauding, pillaging, and pirating. That was hey, good, right? hey. Hey. Hashtag pirates. Cheers to that. Yes. I, I don't know what half Cheers. those words were. I don't know what half those words were. What's marauding? Leave in the comments uh, what marauding means. That's what I'm going to do with blackfin tuna on Monday. Oh, oh man. Man. We're going to marauds and blackfin oh, tuna. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, here. Exactly. I've never caught exactly. like blackfin pink, tuna. Pink and uh, purple bucktails right there. You Those think are that's the key? Purple and pink. Yeah, you know, the pink is my favorite for anything. I mean, it's, pink yeah. is pump. That's why I fish a pink, pink rod. I, you guys didn't see the video because I forgot my SIM card, but I just got two nice redfish over 30 inches. On a pink rod. It wasn't a pink jig. It wasn't a pink MB3 base. I apologize, Mike. Hey man, I was fishing my love trip, lost here. But um, I did get smacked on this right here. Let's talk about this, actually. We haven't moved into your soft plastics, so let's talk about your oh, soft plastics. Oh, yes. Plastic. That's this right. one got, I, I couldn't throw, honestly, I couldn't, I could not throw a jig enough because of uh, how quick shrimp was getting annihilated. It's winter. And I'm sorry, if you're in Tampa or in Florida in general, winter, live bait, dead bait is the key because it's slow, it's, it's, all the fish are nostalgic. That was pretty cool. That was really cool. That's so I, I only there. was able to throw this like subtly every once in a while mm -hmm. because my shrimp was just getting annihilated. But this one absolutely got destroyed. So how do you go into making these soft plastics? Because that's yeah, something that's I would cool. actually really like to do is make soft plastics. So I've got three main salt plastics that I, I, I market the most. Um, you know, I've got a couple custom molds at home just from some ideas in my head, but ultimately, especially down here, you know, fishing the flats, the Tampa Bay, the West Coast area is prime for that paddle tail. Um, so I offer three different salt plastics as the main course. Um, you know, I've got a five inch fluke, uh, which does a really dynamite job on a weightless hook or a weighted hook with a screw lock which Mike also makes, is the screw lock weedless hooks. I am a big They're fan awesome. of those. I, this am a big is, fan of those. Uh, I do have a critique though, is that some of the, some of the plastics that I throw, specifically what I was throwing the other day, was a Z-Man and I could not twist it on. Right. right. Because it was just the, I don't know what they used for whatever this is. It just would not. It's all about on. the quality of the plastic. So. Yeah. Is that too much? Is it too thick? So their, their plastic is entirely different than what I use. Um, you know, what I'm looking for is a lot of action, a good bite for the fish themselves, because there's a lot of uh, plastics out there that have great action, but as soon as they get bit off, they're, they're done. Yeah. It's game over. So these things, um, super durable. Um, you know, they don't have the stretch of the Z-Man. I don't have that, that magic touch as far as that, but I'm going to get you it's some really good. great plastics, um, a solid bite, in three different sizes, three different styles, and it's going to cover everything you need for your inshore fishing here, uh, especially on the west coast of Florida. So you get the five-inch fluke like I talked about before, Jordan was talking about, which um, you know it's got the solid tail, uh, works really dynamite with weighted hook, screw lock, gives you a really good zoom. You can walk the dog with it. Uh, a lot of different ways to fish it. It looks really good. Um, then you've got what Ryan has here is what I call the bullet minnow. The bullet minnow has a nice big head, so it's got a lot of forward weight, forward movement to it with a really tiny paddle on the back, so it gives you a good motion in the back. Once you get that thing going, a lot of vibration through the water. Um, gives a bigger profile, uh, depending if the fish are being a little more finicky. And then ultimately the final thing is if we got really cold water, really slow moving current, sluggish fish, we're going all the way down to a three inch ripper minnow, which has the ribs all the way down the sides. Again, super action on the paddle tail. But again, this thing is gonna be worked really slow, bouncing off the bottom, not a ton of grip it and rip it, jig like your life depends on it. This is really gonna be that one where you gotta have a lot of patience, 
working through those flats, working through the graphs, uh, but I promise you the results are going to really pay off if you, if you pay attention to what that water looks like, the temps look like in the current. That's my, that's my biggest problem in inshore flat fishing, especially in winter, is I'm a turn and burn, that's what I like to call it. I try to cover as much ground as possible, mm -hmm. but I've always been told, and uh, give this advice to you guys as well, that if you're if you're catching ladyfish, you're reeling too fast. Your your snook trout redfish are there, but your ladyfish are catching it because they're almost reaction strikes. They're in the same area, they're mm -hmm. doing the same things, but you're you're ripping it too fast. Those those fish are there. You found fish. You found a good feeding ground especially in the winter, but you're just doing a little too much. So that's one thing I really need to work on. One thing I would recommend on these uh, Weebo Sucks mics, since I'm an expert on uh, on, these, <laughs> on jig building, is why not put a solid, like another piece, a solid piece of, what what is this made out of? Steel? So, I, I thought he was just I, talking I think, about that. Yeah, so I think what you're getting at is the center lock pin. That way um, you can, you so you can center screw, your baits right on? Yeah, you can get screw um, on it, like more heavy duty baits onto it. So perfect example guys, honestly, when it comes down to you know testing each product personally, making sure that the right things get out of the market, um, you know, I just had several orders of center locking pins come in uh, for the screw lock hooks. And before I, I make them publicly available, before I market them, um, you know, I've got to test them. I want to make sure that um, what the right thing is going out there is going to do justice for the anglers. So uh, I literally just sent out one test, um, one test sample out down to uh, Matt Lachey uh, down in like the Cape Coral area uh, of Florida. So we're getting some really good tests out of there. Um, so you already have uh, that idea out there. Yep. So the idea is out there. The center locking pin uh, with the screw lock is out there. It's being tested currently right now. Um, so I didn't once, just come out with a million dollar idea. It wasn't my idea. You your, know what? In your you mind, million there. dollars, but when you get the right one, that's the million oh, dollars. Oh man, I'm gonna cash in on that because that's what I'm all about. So I'll, yeah, I'll come back to you with the check. Yeah, so I'll it's just, it's just it's, it's it right currently out there being tested by a couple guys uh, in in Southwest Florida, and um, you know, looking forward to their feedback. You know, I'll obviously go out there personally and get some things out here locally as well. Uh, but that's what I'm looking for is, is getting that feedback so I can find the right screw lock, the right center pin lock that uh, is going to give us, you know, that same quality and standard as MD3 Bates is known for. That's awesome. Yeah, that was my only complaint is uh, I had some, I had some soft plaques. I didn't, I wasn't using Mike's jigs, probably why I lost the tournament. Um, I'd say so. I was using Mike's jigs and I played second in that tournament. That's yeah. the, you can watch the video. Uh, We'll put it down below. <laughs> the link is going to be right here. Yeah. Right here. And also, <laughs> if you guys... Had just, I had a center lock and pin, though, it would have been a totally different story. I would have just won everything. There, please, uh, please be sure to take a moment to subscribe. Right, right down over here. Over here. Somewhere. You're, somewhere you're pointing at my... Uh, down here. Uh, yeah, don't. Yeah. <laughs> and also hit the notification bell so you guys will know when we upload a new video. Alright, is there anything else? Well, we haven't reviewed the beer yet. Yeah, we so should probably review this beer. I think we went, we've went over uh, Mike's jigs. Yeah, we've covered Mike's jigs. We pretty covered, well. we're, we covered why we're covering these jigs because it's what we're going to use offshore. So you're going to see the, these jigs in, in action. action on Monday. 100%. And at the very least, depending on weather, you'll see the hog balls in action. And that's yep. key because everybody's talking about hog balls right now, but I don't see a ton of big hogs caught. I don't see yep. hogs all over the internet right now. So this is a good opportunity to showcase what what these can do as opposed to others. I, I like how other hog balls have the beads and things like that, but you made a very good point. That subtle hint, that subtle yeah. bite that we see. I mean, I, I can't count how many times we called hogs in our last video because mm -hmm. we we have so much experience catching these fish. Check out that video. Yeah, that's a Found really them. good video. And you'll notice if you actually, if you're watching the video and you look at our rod tip, You'll, you'll see Ryan and I say, oh, that's a hog. And it's literally just a just a very, very subtle tap. And then you know, like, okay, that's a hog. You set the hook on it, and then immediately it starts digging. It starts spinning circles. It almost feels like a grouper, but you know it's a hog. Yeah, so you we're know. very excited to try that. Now, if we do get deeper and we can go after the AJs, we can go after the tuna and the African pompano, you're going to see these jigs in work. Fingers crossed. Yeah, fingers crossed. The weather is not looking great, 
But uh, we'll leave that up to our captain, Pablo, to decide. And we're uh, obviously we're not going to. Um, it, safety's first. Safety always comes first. So um, now I guess <laughs> I guess now now's the time to review the beer, huh? Yeah. So you heard my sweet at sweet song. <laughs> yeah, you heard uh, Jordan read the uh, you know little little notes on the beer here in in song. Which is only right. I, I probably crushed a few of those words. Yeah, probably. Yeah, killed it with mosaic. That's all right. The other night I tried like reading it. I'm like, wait, what? 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 Yeah, I messed up a couple times. So he, yeah, did, he that, did pretty good. Was He was able to sing it. That's that, that New, New, pretty, New pretty Jersey impressive. education, brother. New so Jersey education. I will say I'm the only Floridian here. Yeah. And I'm the second best fisherman I know. So that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Besides, you know, me, the Jersey guy. Yeah, I will reclaim my title, I assure you. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> hey, well, guys, um... On that note... Man down! I think we're going to wrap it up right there. I think we've done a pretty good job representing uh, MV3 Bates. Mike described everything. I mean, uh, I mean, way more perfectly than I ever could have. And uh, if you guys have any questions about MV3 Bates, you can ask in the comments, or you can. Uh, I'll, I'll leave Mike's contact info down below, so you can email him for uh, mm -hmm. for orders, custom orders, everything. How can you we can reach you? Your how, how can, um... So right now, website is in the works. So the best way to reach me, you can find me on Facebook at um, Facebook backslash MB3 Bates. Instagram is also um, you'll probably message me there, uh, MB3 Bates. Um, or you can shoot me an email at mb 3 bates at gmail.com. Um, so best three ways to get there. Uh, it really gives me an opportunity to connect with each angler and really talk about exactly what you're looking for, what you're fishing for, colors, styles, water, you name it. We're going to make the, the, the perfect um, tackle for you. Cool. Let's make it happen. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I figure we might as well let him describe it. Good, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I That's mean, it could be the me. invasion tropical pale ale that caused that me to interrupt you. It's set a little bit. Right there. You know, I'm ready to, ready to go marauding, pillaging, and pirating. I mean, I think we might just have to out and go do some of that right yeah. now. Well, off to John's Pass we go. There we go, John's Pass. Let's go. We can hook up the boat right now. Looks like wind died down. Yeah, it's looking pretty nice yeah, outside. It's like a nice snook night. We could go catch some snooks. That's a good idea, but we got the kids. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's All right, Jordan, we will see you later. Me and Mike are going to go We're out and test some, some, of these, <laughs> some of these jigs hey, out. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> duty. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Like, uh, yes, please uh, subscribe down below. Hit the notification bell if you haven't already. And then watch it out. Monday's a big day. Be, be, be uh, fun. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for these uh, jigs to, to be in work. We're going to catch. Actually, hold on. Before you cancel this, Ryan, before you turn it off, we have a wager going on for $20 for who catches the biggest fish on Monday. And who's it going to be? Is it going to be me? Is it going to be Mike? Is it going to be Jake? Is it going to be Ryan? We already know it's going to be me. So that's it. That's all we got. Tune in. We all know it's going to be me. <laughs> Are you satisfied?